Hey folks, thanks for joining me. Still got the little Air Master receiver sitting on the bench. Haven't done any more work with it. Anyway, the uh, oscillator coil resides here. The tickler coil uh, between this location, this location, and the tune circuit here across the uh, top. I always like to measure the inductance for reference for the uh, oscillator coils when I'm doing the uh, restoration. I've got those measurements. I also looked at the oscillator section of the uh, variable condenser or capacitor. And uh, let me just show you the uh, math behind that. How everything kind of adds up to make the uh, receiver resonate in the uh, broadcast band in addition, uh, you know, how the oscillator frequencies themselves fall. Hey guys, I was drawing this out as I was going, so um, excuse the uh, penmanship. Again, the 6-alpha-7 pentagrid converter, I think it was introduced in the uh, early 1930s, around 1934. Again, the one tube acts as the oscillator and the mixer. You can see we've got our input signal referred to as the signal or control grid that would come from the antenna coil. We've got a, a screen grid connection as well. And then the uh, magic occurs down here between uh, grid number one and grid number two. Grid number two acts as the uh, plate. You can see that's where the uh, tickler coil attaches. I have the uh, measured inductance there, called out around 29 microhenries. The uh, coupling cap here, typically 50 to 100 picofarads. Uh, this receiver, 100 picofarads, and uh, most common for the uh, grid number one, uh, the bias there, a 22K resistor is more common. This receiver uses a uh, 50K. Anyway, that feeds down to the, uh, I'll call it the primary side of the uh, inductor that we just looked at. It reads 121 microhenries, and you can see the other side of that particular winding feeds over to a, a patter capacitor. Push that up on the screen so you can see that again. And again, all this attaches back to the uh, main variable condenser or variable capacitor, and of course there's a trimmer on this one as well. Typical range of those is plus or minus 10 picofarads for additional adjustments. Measuring the uh, variable capacitor out of circuit, 36 to 394 picofarads. So if you do the math, you'll find that the 36 to 394 picofarads when attached to the 121 um, microhenry inductor does not resonate at the uh, desired oscillator frequency. Thus, you know, the reason or one of the reasons for the uh, patter, you can see the patter is in series with the uh, coil and the other variable capacitor here. So simply, if we do the math, we can figure out what the uh, total capacitance would be. As found in my receiver, the uh, pattern is uh, pre-adjusted to 379, so I haven't touched that at this point in time. 379 picofarads. This is the math for the uh, series capacitance. And again, I'm uh, adding about uh, 12 picofarads of stray capacitance. I found normally around 10 to 15 picofarads of stray capacitance due to the lead wire, etc. is what's common. Again, I can't measure that. I'm just estimating that number. So you can see uh, 45 to 205 picofarads would be typically what the 
capacitance would be in addition to the 121 microhenries of inductance. We can apply these formulas. In this case, we'll just look for frequency. So I can take the square root of 25, 330 divided by L times C. I've worked the uh, math out here. And you can see if we uh, take the uh, first number and look at 45 picofarads with the 121 microhenry inductor, that puts the oscillator at 2.16 megahertz. If I subtract the IF frequency at 456, you can see that puts the uh, broadcast band right where it needs to be, just a little north of 1700 uh, kilohertz or kilocycles. Same uh, process here for the uh, lower part of the band, the uh, 121 inductor times the uh, 205 picofarads. Puts the oscillator uh, just north of one megahertz, backing out the IF frequency of 456 kilohertz or 0.456 megahertz, brings the low end of the broadcast band down to uh, 554 kilohertz. Thought I would share that. Hope you found it helpful. Thanks again for watching.